So we visibly present the above meeting location, the following items will be discussed. Call the order at six o'clock. Invocation. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us on this day and every day, Lord. We ask you for, especially during this Lenten and soon Passover season, Lord, that we be mindful always, Lord, of you and to walk with you and to make good decisions for the citizens and the guests of our community, particularly tonight, Lord, to consider business that will affect all of them. Help us, Lord, to walk with you and make decisions in your grace. Lord, for which ends one nation under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. One, I pledge allegiance to be one of under God, one. Everybody, my name is Jenna Howard, and I reside at Richard Eagle Center. And I just like to say that, uh, uh, as far as the Friends of the Library is concerned, we're very um, ha happy and gracious that the city allowed um, us to have this hostess function. It was a complete success. It was so much fun, and um, you know, we raised money on behalf of um, the Friends of the Library, but our initiative was um, to upgrade the furniture for the kids. Um, section as a start to hopefully one day, um, you know, acquire those grants that the city is going out for currently. And um, I just wanted to say thank you um, as a citizen of the East Stem um, for allowing us to hold the function. Mm -hmm. So, um, in your packet, you'll have the first page that is the um, standard information. The balance of the books right now is the same as the one that's the second one. So, the second page is the statement of the first page, which is the end of January 31st. We are at 88% collected for our property tax revenue. This time last year, we were about 91%, so we're a little lower, but there was a lot of um, appeals and um, the taxes, so I, I just normally think like that we're a little, a little more behind this year than where we were at this time last year, but we're still tracking this line. Revenue overall, we're actually ahead of where we were at this year for total revenue. We're at 7.9% collected. This time last year, we had it 69 Collecting. So overall, we're still ahead um, on the revenue collection for the for the year. Um, as far as expenses go, uh, we are in month four, so we're around 33, 34 uh, percent of expenses, and right now we're at 34.4 percent of our total expenses. So we are tracking the unbudgeted amount um, that is 
following items are the balance sheets for all of the different funds and the check for the Item. Oh, I'm sorry. I have one. The minutes consideration possible action to approve the following minutes: December 12, 2023. That's the mm -hmm. title, and we're going to table. I'll let the table is for next meeting. Yeah. Was made by Mayor Carter, seconded by Councilman Tolan to uh, table item one. Yes. 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 Adopt the budget amendment 2023 2024 fiscal year. So, before you see this point, we're going to talk to you for uh, 01. So, this is the for our budget amendment. What we did is the budget and we had an outstanding deal for the proposal that um, the council approved in the prior fiscal year budget. So, this ordinance bringing forward that deal uh, was attached to the uh, ordinance for a record. And um, we have gotten word from a neighbor that, that we should be finally getting the machine to pull in. We might now, with, I don't know if we have anything, maybe you want to come in any time now. So we wanted to make sure that this money was brought forward and used for something to properly cut the, the check. So um, this is uh, presenting to you for the first reading. And if you have any questions about it, I would have to have it. Adopting a bunch of amendments for the fiscal year for twenty two to what you said. Motion made by Councilman Tolan, second by Councilman Dr. Romero to approve the 2024 Yes. 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 I want to congratulate the town and the council that play a significant part in our life, uh, small community, local parks, and I'm pretty proud of the business staff that are using the business staff and have our research in the business So, um, there's a little packet in your, um, there's a little packet in your packet that um, gives a little bit about the link for the Texas Park and Wildlife. There are 28 small community applications throughout the state of Texas, 16 of which were funded. Uh, the credit list was not only approved, but we were ranked number one by nine points. So the, uh, the applicant ended up behind us with that, uh, 73 points, and we were up 83. So we did extremely well in our... I, I give everyone copies, oh, okay. copies at the, on the table of this packet for us to get these and then we can get there. Um, I didn't just give you a list of the behind, so I mean on the top. Um, so the, so it shows that we were, like I said, we, we went, we were, we were answered by nine points for the more improvement. 
the the next page it is kind of small but this is the site concept that was approved for the uh, the grant you'll see the uh, soccer field improvements the musical playground and two uh, improvements the cleaning areas the price breakdown is also there and um, it comes up to the 300,000 for the 150 per month and the 150 from the Texas Parks and Wildlife um, and then also the fitness equipment and so forth the following the science concept of what we have sort of turned as baby issue. And um, last night we presented the CDC with a application to pay the grant writer to apply for the uh, Valley Baptist Legacy Foundation grant in the amount of 500000 There is no local match for that grant. It is just 500000 And the grant typically follow uh, you know, awarded for the Tech Park and Wildlife um, Award. So we have a very good shot considering how high we rank in the Tech Park. Wildlife uh, grant application. And this site concept breaks down um, more of what we would like to do during phase two, which we would like to use more playground equipment, more signage, more covered um, seating over the picnic areas, and um, the, the splash pad that does include the splash pad, the roof of the enclosure. closure. Um, it is like the first wildlife, you know, designed for the environment, so we have to have it going to the facility for the safety. So this is what this money is going to get. And the last page is just um, some examples of some uh, the musical universal design um, equipment. Um, there's the inclusive equipment for exercise and rules, the drinking bottles, the cup uh, water fountain, and then of course the improvements to the to the soccer field and removing the, the cement pads, which can become a, a, a more of an athletic youth soccer field. So. No, this will all be a hundred percent for the lower I would like to see, and I know I've said this since I first got off, got in this position here, a small, and I know people are have their opinions on this venture, but a small little piece for the dog. You know, I've said it before. You know, it's important because we have a lot of dog owners in the community and there are very little dog, there is no dog park for the dogs to just come hang out. And when I went to New York City, like every little nook and cranny, there's a little spot for dogs that are owners. And, and Manhattan is like this, you know? We have this sprawling area over here to the side. I know that we can fit the soccer field here and then put a little piece just for the dogs. I know we can see we can try to redesigned that I know that the golf course has started their little, you know, meetups I saw on next door and I thought that was pretty cool. They started that for the dog water and stuff, but having a facility, you know, to to allow for the dog to run and play safely would be something that's important, I think, in this little picture here. I think we could do it. It would probably have to be in the second. Mm -hmm. yeah, and the yeah. legacy grant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when uh, a money will be put in April to approve that one, so if that's something you want to see then um, when, when that, I mean, I'll, I'll tell Patty and that should be included in there, but let's not mm -hmm. Can you utilize the lot next door? Yeah. 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 I know we talked about the lot across being overflow and stuff like that, but it's half of it. I know it's by the street, but it's me. Yeah, I mean, so we take the cost and set it back by the mm -hmm. and you can get inside the layout of the, the, of the back of the of, corner. Of this one, it kind of, of or of the one across the street, and um, then that way you can see sizes and, and um, set it next one if you want. Yeah. All right. I guess. Okay. Yeah. I like that idea. I have dogs. I love to play. I have dogs. I, I just want to make sure that when we when we do our due diligence on this project, that we look at the um, liabilities. I know a lot of cities, as Howard has said, and have lots of other big cities, other small cities, have done this effectively. I just would want to make sure that we don't, you know, 
set ourselves up for any kind of situation. Your occurrence should happen so dogs, maybe you don't hurt, whatever. I don't, I've never put it, I don't know, I've never done it, but I, I think it's important that we look at that aspect as well going forward. And if you need any help, let me know. When we did the part three, we recycled everything to support the park over there. Um, and it worked for 10 years, yeah. you know. So, I'll come with my question. I just want to thank all the citizens. You know, 200 people do the uh, do the survey, which helped drive this whole thing. Mm -hmm. So, what, what our citizens really want. So. Okay. Item seven: conditional use permit. Ordering general elections for the next four twenty twenty four six four five six and the latest matter. Alan, yeah, Mayor. Okay, and as we uh, uh, do for election season, uh, here's the resolution by which the town council will order the election. Uh, general election for May, the uniform election date in May for the uh, three places that are this year. Uh, the resolution also, as, as it usually does, that it encompasses uh, grants to the city council to enter into the county election services. Uh, the contract is, uh, I review the contract, it's the same one they, they give us uh, every three mm -hmm. season. It does uh, uh, provide that if we are required to cancel the election, uh, we, we won't owe them any money. Uh, beyond whatever they done for us already, which at this stage is probably not uh, uh, so. Uh, and uh, again, uh, we will uh, we will know whether state law requires us to pass the election after the next Tuesday, because then Friday will be the deadline by which uh, in, anybody interested in having their interest on the ballot that is required to submit an essay for next Tuesday will be the deadline for declaration of right of candidates. Once those two things go by, uh, the city secretary will be able to determine whether there's a position on it, or if there is none, state law requires us to cancel the election. So we'll be able to do that with plenty of time to let the county know that we won't be needing their services. But if we do, then uh, this resolution authorizes the city to take charge of that. Very good. And I just want to know that the, the cost of the election is $16,825. So, gone up and up. Quite a bit. It was expensive before. Yeah. So. Motion. Second. Twenty-three dash on what? Ordering for election for phase one. Doctor, I will second, but I don't want to come on that. Being said, can I get already? I want to point out that I think that the. The wordings in the Okay, motion made by Councilman Gonzalez, seconded by Councilman for Power to approve resolution 2024 01. Councilman Rivera? Yes. Councilman Rivera? Yes. Councilman Mitchell? Yes. Councilman Rivera? Sorry. Councilman Bryant? Yes. Item 6, the CDC, I move to uh, put this. After the uh, go in executive. Second. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Motion made by the Mayor Carter, seconded by Councilor Patrolman to uh, move the 
these three to activate. Council Member O'Neill? Council Member Keller? Council Member Shaw? Yes. Council Member Zipai? Yes. Council Member Wright? Yes. Yes. Is everyone's here? <laughs> 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 Item seven. Additional due purpose. The Federation of Bottle Action is being judicially conditional due for guidance. So we are here to Motion to approve conditional use permits for strikes. Second. 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 Motion made by Councilman Cabello, seconded by Councilman Tolan to approve the conditional use permit for stripes. Councilman Romero? Yes. Councilman Howard? Yes. Councilman Tolan? Yes. Councilman Gonzalez? Yes. Councilman Bryant? Yes. Mayor Kirk? Yes. You want to get their uh, margarita on? We're going to have a day when we put that in. We are going to get to that. Uh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Item A Primary Care Clinic Advisory Board. Consideration of possible options for your primary care clinic advisory board. Okay, so the people. I want to be in the one of the, you know, could make some sense you know, if they think of primary care clinic and their needs and wants are for our community. And um, here we are. And just a little history on this. There's been a lot of contentions in our community about this. And uh, I'm not really sure why, but it is what it is. But um, we did this for five years. We spent $125,000. It's not us, but the CDC was in charge of this. We have no say over how the CDC spends their money. We only approve that they want to spend their money. And uh, it was five years, and at the end of the day, UTRGB didn't want to stay. I went to a couple of meetings with them. They said they lost two hundred sixty two hundred eighty thousand dollars in the last year. The year before that, they lost two hundred twenty thousand um, dollars. According to them, which is all documented, that they had a daily rate of about eight patients. That's like you know, if you went through two hundred sixty days of operation, two thousand one hundred seventy nine visits, about eight people per day. Even if you were to go down to a teacher who was 187 days, that's 11 people a day. So, obviously, they were having some issues uh, getting people in. In the between the CDC and UCRGP, going back and forth in the last year trying to renegotiate their contracts, the, uh, you know, we also not we just the offer what we were going to give them before. It's actually up to a little bit to $36,000. And then they came back and wanted $125,000 for one week. And so they went back and forth for a while. And they came back to a, an agreement for $36,000. You know, it took a few months to get there. But UTRGB decided. And, you know, that's out of our hands. So hopefully, with what we're doing here, we can have the community come together and come to a solution at a five month. So if you guys want to do this, and 
I think that we should set the rules the way that we set up the uh, the, the ethics committee. We set that up after we pass the uh, city charter to where each one of us gets to choose one member. Okay, so we'll uh, open the advisory board, accept applications starting tomorrow. And then in the next meeting, we'll uh, choose the board. And then see where it goes. I, I know it's not in our packet, so when I ask this question, I, I know that we don't have it, but it'll be important that we have a mission and charter statement for this advisory board, even if it's just a half a page long, so that we understand and the citizens who serve on it understand what their roles and responsibilities are and what they're limited to. I think that'll be important. Okay, so do, do, you, do you think that we should appoint one of us? And what can we do with, with the CDC? Off the top of my head, I think it would be important for one of us to be a member. Whether, it, whether they're the leader or not, I'm going to think about that. But I do think that's important. I would like to also see Mr. Oduna, president, whether it's the beginning stages or the end of the meeting, to be able to advise the board on the legality of can and cannot. That's important. One, one thing I can offer in that, in that direction is that uh, there would be no prohibition on any member of this council serving on that on that board in, in, in any number. The only the only the rule that would apply is if there are going to be either a quorum of this board body on that board or less than a quorum of this body on that board with attendance by yes. other members of the yes. council, then those meetings would be subject to otherwise it's merely an advisory board. It doesn't have any any authority to bind bind the town. It, uh, it would just make recommendations to the town council. Which will then enact the final decision on whatever it decides. Uh, on matters of, of charter or statement, uh, typically those are those are taken care of as the first order of business of the new uh, the new body, the newly formed body once the members are appointed, once the designation. However, if the, the, the council in directing the composition of the body or the mission of the body can create limits, circumscribe or whatever area of authority, whether there is inquiry or not, uh, and so you can get ahead of their right. official adoption. Otherwise, they'll, the body will run sure. a lot like this body does with sort of parliamentary rules. They'll, they'll make motions, they'll vote, that kind of thing. But the, the, the extent of their authority will be to make recommendations to us. Sure. Uh, to, to, to you, to the you, council, uh, we'll have to vote. Right. Do we, Mr. Gonzalez, do we have something in writing already? Well, we never 
remember a city that there were the city operating the a business that was incentivized by the other but which is what the statute allows us to do. And so that's the model, you know, of, 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 it is it's probably going to be the, the basis for the next thing. However, if it's creating a couple of ideas, those are things that, that, that can be the basis of the presentation that the city can then give to the council, and the council can with their involvement. Continue with that model, change that model, or try something different. It's all on the table. I'm going to be part of the discussion. Yes, Howard. In my opinion, as opposed to your recommendation of picking someone as far as like from the community to be on this board, I would like to see applications. I know we're a little in the crunch time only because what if one of us doesn't have a pick? Then no, who? That's that for the next one. Ah, okay. But you're just uh, saying just the uh, this is Mrs. Bradley to be from the first assessment, and then we're looking at um, oh, because you had said about the picking one person. I'm mean, saying so we're going to have a pool of applicants. Okay. And then out of the pool of applicants, in, in, instead of one person jumping in and firing off, you know, like we're going to have, you know, I have an in, in, oh, okay. in, 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 instead of a fight, like one person trying to dominate the meeting. Okay. We all got to choose one person. Oh, from the pool. From the pool. Ah, okay. So it's. More fair, like uh, we do with the ethics. Uh, I'm not okay. aware. The only discussion would be that's it. Yeah, it's it's just that way, you know, everybody gets uh, an opportunity. Yeah. Okay. There's an indication on the number of individuals. Would be seven. Seven. Okay. Um, I know that you have multiple meetings with ETRG and this process at the department. I'm curious if, if during those conversations that uh, it was disclosed that any other town, city, municipalities that were reporting their their clinics in a way that the CDC or or some other analogous entity in other towns, you know, like what the support they were getting from the town of Bermuda was really unique completely to our to what we have here. The only other one that that they have. Which is interesting because I asked what would it take for them to stay. They said they needed a full backstop. And I said, what is that? What does that consist of? I'm, and Dr. Pe uh, Dean Patriarch said, I need two hundred eighty thousand dollars. And he said, actually, I don't even need two hundred eighty thousand dollars. I need, I need you to guarantee the coverage of all my losses. And so I asked, well, is there anybody else who does that? Well, there is one other person who does do that. SpaceX. And um, I was like, well, Elon can sneeze and he makes $280,000. So uh, that's that's where that ended. Um, it's my understanding that our clinic was not the only one that was closed. Oh, um, what's the ground that was the closing? They, they closed another one, Ian Brown. Because uh, I talked to somebody else at UTRTB and they went to the biannual budgeting meetings up in Austin and the the uh, the congressional people told them that they cannot operate at a loss and they have to close whoever's making whoever's not making any money. So I can't even make any money is breaking even. Motion to consider the acts or create a primary care clinic advisory board. Motion by Council of Zach, seconded by Council of Dr. Romero to approve the primary clinic advisory board. Council of Romero? Yes. 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 Yeah. 
out of nine primary care care clinic advisory board applications for the possible SCP primary care clinic advisory board application. This district proves that we do not need application for this. Oh. Yes, that's right. We have a, they will be available tomorrow. That's the one. That's the hall. Talk to them now. Okay, so applications will be online and that's the hall. Sorry, the hall. I know this is a very sensitive subject. I know it's an it's an urgency. Uh, I should try to move it forward. I would like to see a deadline up to this, and also if we would consider a special meeting to approve. This board so they can start working. That's it. See, it's plenty of time to. I don't think it's a good one. Is your point here? That's just a little bit time. When does your next newsletter go out to the community? So, I have to by our next meeting. Yes. All right. So, do you want a deadline that they want to send it in so they can review it? Another incident for short term rentals to get registered with. 
with us because we were going to try to help um, obviously advertise any of the opportunities available to stay in the Winter So, um, we're looking at that too. And uh, so, then uh, all the departments took on departments. I mean, I'm sorry, governmental forms. Go to the governmental forms. So, this is where we're going to have to the right. Okay, so so there'll be a link there. But there'll be a link with um, the any any forms that are happening for uh, building applications or for advisory forms. Any of the forms that we have, it's an information request form. There'll be a, a, a button for uh, for those forms. So it's, uh, it's <laughs> so if there's any questions or addition, something you're seeing that I'm missing. Um, we had that on the last one. We can add that. I, I don't think it's on this one as of right now. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I don't think we have it on there. But we can we can certainly put something on there. Randy, who is assigned to update the website? So um, it's right now that the, myself and Carla and Matthew are the ones that know how to do it. So there's only two that, that know how to not two. I mean, the, those we Carla and I are the ones that do it. So uh, when we post on the website uh, the agendas and things like that, she does that work for me and I help teach her how to do that and uh, you know give her more comfortable with website design. And uh, so those it's a matter of routine or just that any content changes if a business calls and wants to be added that goes to me. Uh, so the only thing she posts is just the uh, agendas the minutes the day after the meeting she goes in and posts the uh, approved the minutes and the dates for meetings and that. So so when will this be ready to go? The the goal is right now we still have to schedule that's on later on the agenda we need to schedule the final pictures for retakes for the council and um, there's some council members that just did their first take it uh, when we did the headshots so they're still doing that and they're starting to look over content and so that will take a little bit so I'm spring is what my my goal is ASAP what the deadline is but they're waiting for this final uh, the, the, the calls are in the advanced stages right now so once we approve all the buttons and things like that then they can start moving over and retake where they belong as far as actual content goes so I, I I feel like it'll go quickly now. I don't. I don't want to say March because that's my my annual goal is to start March. I want to have a good start summer. I, I think it's important that we get this done. We've been talking about it for a long time. We mm -hmm. worked really hard on it, and I think we're pending some pictures or some content that's going to get certainly going to be added. Plus, we have the election coming up, and we have a new council members. So we know that we're going to get it all Make this really. This is the base of our community, right? So. I think that's fine. Yeah, if I, if I have everyone um, go ahead on, on the layout, then we will push it forward. And I got the materials yesterday, um, so I kind of wanted to do a new piece by the day. So, the, the logo for the Vista, that's not the current one. Right, no, that was one that they had pulled. It will it will get put to our current one of the comments. It looks like the end is like all turn off, the end of the eye. They're trying to think. I think they're trying to figure out the system. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Eleven town beautification program and holiday project consideration authorizing and to the recommendations from the CDC for the funding of the town beautification program and holiday event support. Randy. So this uh, application was approved by our community council members and they approved it last night. It goes before the CDC. They have a public hearing. This application is approved. Uh, Thirty-five thousand dollars should be spent throughout the course of the year. This is um, will be spent on. Fireworks program, we want holiday decorations that we want to purchase. Any, uh, like I said, the town beautification 
and project. Basically, we're trying to combine the redundancy and the user app project with the typical in the cook. We just combine them into one application so that way we don't have to pay for multiple newspaper publications and come back to that. So we're grouping it into one lump sum. So the the previous report if we did last night, so it was for um have a budget for each event that you find the funding funds on? Um, no, the the fireworks is always they pay support half of the, the fireworks and so that number is on the first part of that. And then from there I expect to be the number to break down of what I'm spending the, the money on um, decorations and items that we need to purchase. It's not a it's not a blank ticket for me to go spend thirty five thousand it's just to avoid us having to do the um, posting each time. So they've approved the funds, but they haven't approved the, the purchase. Yet. When I looked at Christmas decorations last year, I um, took what we spent last year, um, and then I did do the half of what we did for the fireworks, and um, then I added there's some decorations that um, I wanted them to consider for the presentation, and so that's where the number came from. I think we spent around twenty thousand in the holiday decorations last year. Um, that's whenever I used less than ten thousand for um, the fireworks show. And then a five thousand for um, maybe an everyday uh, decoration distribution um, throughout my year. Well, what's going to happen to the budget amount that you already have in the budget for decorations and all that stuff? Because the nurse line I looked at that. Well, those decorations are for like the event. These are for like the big decorations that go out front, like the big bowls to add to our like big huge town decorations. The the, um, the general fund budget, those decorations and events and stuff like that, but we use for like the events that we have at the park so this is to add to the, the, the overall project we're starting this year to improve our overall big holiday decorations right. things, yeah. things that are some cost that we'll continue to use year after year yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mr. the city can apply for this type of assistance Yes, it, it, it falls under the, the statutes that govern this quality of life type, uh, type B corporation, particularly a type B corporation in Cameron County. Uh, and it's been rules are a little different for other counties. It has to do with a formula that looks at the, the relative employment. Uh, so we, we, we meet the, the most permissive level. I don't want to be too micromanager on things, but twenty five thousand. Say the fireworks is ten thousand. We need to make it to around ten, twelve thousand. Say twenty five thousand is going to go to decorations that are what we call the capital outlay kind of decoration. Can we? Can you bring that to us before you purchase? Um, I'm not to say that I was extremely fond of the bulbs. They're cute. But I was like, there's no light, it's not lit. You had to put, I mean, it wasn't functional for me only in daytime. But it was nice, it was a good added, you know, to the Christmas decorations. But to me, I think that, I don't know, the aesthetics of things, I'm particular, because, you know, I want to make sure that we all, I don't want to like micromanage that part, but I'm just saying, if you could bring it to us before we purchase so that we can at least say like yay or nay no, or option. The yes, twenty five thousand worth of decorations does a lot of decorations. Absolutely, that's one of the reasons we're doing it now, so we have time to do right. it. They're they're already messaging me and saying, "Where's your order for Christmas?" So this will be yeah, and we want to order another green. So uh, this will allow me the ability to kind of move forward with putting that project together and uh, showing you guys whatever. Uh, I have no problem with that. But that is what helps me do that because I can do it early. And because last year we were kind of um, under the gun for time. And um, so we're waiting for the proposal for the price to approve the town education program for the holiday project. Council member Ramirez? Yes. Council Member Howard? Yes. Council Member Cullen? Yes. 
This is the same uh, operation that we've been doing years to several years on this one. We don't know exactly how much money we'll get. You never know until Congress tells you how much you're going to get, and they're still working on it. But uh, we've been part of this, and we've been benefit. Uh, it benefited us with the actually the purchase of the Pell unit for the PD, as you're aware of. And uh, we had a meeting last year, and it worked out really great where we, we don't have to respond to the uh, to the river and the lawsuit with the city abandoned, but we do go to the uh, the bridge here. And I can't think of the name right now. On 48, yeah. and they get you know lots of us and gas fees and everything else coming up. And uh, anyway, that's our agreement. We go pick up the stuff and pick up the people, and that's what we do. I mean, it's been this past year worked out really great. So we're excited to stay part of that. Item 
15 resolution 2024 04 consideration of possible action to authorize the Luna Vista Police Chief to submit grant application number 5516601 for the border zone fire department. Thank you. Yeah, this is a new grant. It's really uh, a grant for the border committees, border uh, counties. It's, you know, Cameron, Hidalgo, Star, just really on each county north of that. And one of the deals is, like I suggested, I've all seen the news about, about this grant is, yeah, they're going to ask for locals to assist. Like if we have the, an issue at this problem, and it's basically the, the new EMS folder is awesome because it really qualifies. We have people there and our fire department people to respond to assist these people, you know, check them out, whatever the case may be. And the cool thing about this grant is it can be from any equipment from twenty to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So everybody's asking everything all the way in the same old lamps. But, <laughs> but most of the stuff is is uh, fortunately uh depending on what you ask for, but we're gonna Ask for the black bag from 17 to get the 17, 15, whatever it is, a new one, like 45,000 dollars. They're going to purchase that for us. And anything we're going to use um, to assist them. Now, the bad deal is you can't buy a fire truck or you can't buy an Yeah. So, um, but, but, you know, 350,000 dollars. And, you know, we can buy an all new bumper gear, boots, yeah. everything. Yeah. We can sell all this. And I'm just, I haven't finished writing this grant. We're going to put in all our capabilities and what we're able to do, which we're, we're going to be up there with everybody. So, and so, depending on what we get, I don't know what it is yet. I'm waiting for the base to send me. Most of it's non reimbursable, reimbursable, but some of it is we they pay 90%, we end up paying 10%. I don't know what it could be. I'm going to ask for everything. So. We'll see, but we don't know if salary is for sure right. what that item is. And we don't have a fund to do it very expensive, and they have the, and they have the lifespan that's not very long. So, thank you. Motion made by Council for Dr. Romero, second by Council. I'm going to approve resolution 2024 04. Council Member Yes. Council Member Yes. Council Member Yes. Yes. Item 16. Consideration of possible action to approve and possible travel to Norma for our boat stop. Carly. De la Peña. Carly. De la Peña. Thank 
CBG might be the same community program. A grant program administered by the Texas General Land Office. Well, this is we, yeah, this is a great one. This is a good one. You guys uh, approved us to go forward with this program uh, uh, for last, I believe. So this is just the um, official resolution approval that we can go out for uh, the administration of this program. So uh, inspired in your packet. But um, do you, um, uh, Javier, do you want to speak on it at all? Well, um, I'm wondering if there's anybody else that's uh, missing. Oh, I wanted to give out this. I think they have this one. We have it. They have it. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. And I just read this one. This one talks about the, the actual program. I have a Sorry. The, the second page talks about the resilient community program, and I thought it'd be uh, important that, that we have that. And, and the reason that I asked about other industry uh, companies here is because I thought that it'd be important that uh, if I want to say something, everybody yeah, else. Yeah, in any case, uh, this is the, the uh, general land office that we sent in for the program, and it's now available to the cities and counties affected by 2015, 2016 flood and hurricane uh, Harvey. There's no match for this program. And you can get as much as $300,000 for this program. And, and what it does is that uh, the administrator does a comprehensive uh, plan for the city. And the plan must be forward looking and integrated with a, a hazardous mitigation plan. It won't exist. It must identify local hazard risk and explain how it mitigates against this risk. The plan must include population study, housing study, land use study plan, zoning ordinance, infrastructure study, and capital improvement. This, this type of program is very important for small communities like this because you can prepare to, uh, to avoid things happening here if you plan ahead of time. And we have a very, very good uh, planning uh, department. They'll come out here, they'll go through everything that we're talking about and, and uh, prepare a plan for you. For the community, it it helps the community in the end from all this risks. So basically, it, it's it's that simple. That's it. Thank you. Thank 
five by one counter with the integration for the account building and the And then five by one point zero eight seven liberation is very possible that comes to development and then the bank. And five by one point zero seven four liberation is very significant. So most of you are take the first time. And six is going to be it's going to be that you can see consideration of possible action. Six post shared LLCs and late documents. Before you talk about the first but the CDP group has spent ten thousand dollars to secure the building process rate loan that held them up for the first six years. The rent of that of that unit space for the month of January, February, March, and April. The approval was done last night, and it's like two hundred dollars. How much? I'd like to make a comment about this before. before I, I'm a I'm a board certified internal medicine physician. I've practicing in, in this area for a number of years, and uh, and I also have been a long time supporter of UPRGB. Um, so I'm 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 on their back. I'm a I'm a voluntary faculty member for UPRGB. I've been at teaching the faculty for for quite a while. Um, I do it because I believe in the institution and I believe uh, in the need to develop on that people down here. Um, and uh, not to be braggadocious, but I've been awarded uh, as the innate physician of the year by the medical students by the residents, and uh, and I, I do it without pay because it's it's important that we have access to care here in the government. I'm still served for a long, long time. That being said, I I don't think that this clinic is operating as a capacity that. Is consistent with what all the other primary care clinics in our area had been doing. The bond that they were seeing uh, was not on par with any other practice that I am aware of in our area that maintained a sustainable fashion. And and uh, and that that may be a very bad position for me to say here publicly. Uh, as I am both on faculty there, but I, I think it was my my duty and my obligation to say it as it is for for our town here in the Northeast. I don't know of any physician in South Texas that you get by with seeing eight patients a day. Uh, it's, it's, that's usually half the morning clinic schedule for <laughs> most of us. Uh, and that we do need care in our community, but uh, the way that it was run by UTRGB, I don't think was any reflection upon the support that it was received from this this town, which was above and beyond any other town in the community. And and was 
was really exceptional. And I and I voted to support the clinic when I was uh, on the TPC. Uh, and uh, I think we will support them. But what they had come to this town to ask of us. And now this is me as a, as a voluntary faculty member of UGRG saying tonight, uh, what they came to us and asked of us, I think is somewhat insulting and set the poor precedent, um, not only for the clinic, but in all honesty, for any business in our town that does not operate in a sustainable fashion, and and I can I'm concerned about the precedent that we may set by trying to subsidize uh, a failing practice. Um, that being said, I, I do realize that um, the property owner who has been leasing the space to the clinic is that is of no fault of his own, and he has continued to work with the city to try and secure space for for a practice in this area. Um, and I recognize that, that this is going to be from January to April, and we're currently um, But uh, I've spoken with many of my colleagues that volunteered many hours trying to, trying to find somebody that I know personal that I've worked with for a long time that I've got deep relationships with. That, uh, that, would, that would come in and open this practice and to take over this, this location. But in all honesty, we are all spread so thin. The availability of clinicians in our community to be able to, to, to run this, this clinic here is one of the issues. And, and that will be a, an ongoing issue beyond the, the months of April or however long we may try to subsidize an empty space. Um, the residency program that generates the largest number of primary care physicians in our area uh, is closing down at the end of, of this year. The Family Practice Residency Program, which is the legacy residency program at Valley Baptist Medical Center, is shut. We are hopefully going to have a place of residency programs coming into the area. Um, but there are a number of physicians that have either passed away or retired recently in our community. And those of us that are still practicing down here are asking you more and more and more, cover more and more. And that need and that burden is tremendous. Um, and to think that we have, have a site that is going to just try and get by with so many people. And I think that it's until the end rate for the university to try and get our taxpayers to pay that kind of money to, to keep them in operation, the level of support that the university is. Uh, and with the need for provider staff. If you go to any primary care practice in the area and you have to spend hours waiting to be seen, um, and, and we have a clinic that is sitting relatively unused. Um, that's, that's my piece of time. Anybody else have anything to say? I know it's very obvious. It's very hard to get ADC to find economic development for the criteria is very specific. Um, you know, and it doesn't sit well with me personally. 
to just know that ten thousand dollars going to the air in hopes to find somebody to replace UTRGV. However, with this um, advisory board, you know, get the job done. And I wish the job, I wish them well. <laughs> we will help you in any way, but $10,000 of your tax tax base going into a hope that we're going to replace or replace the care there. I mean, to me, that doesn't sit well because I know how that CDC runs. And, uh, but we are going to hold our end of the agreement for sure because it's important. So I'll make a motion to consider uh, the incentive agreement between the CDC and Six Courtship LLC for the four months to the end of April. We were looking at the council member Alan Taylor, but the council member Dr. Mayor to approve the uh, economic development incentive between the CDC and Six Court Jet. Council member Yes. 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 Mayor Hart. Like our gym. Yeah. Motion to no. I met with our project manager on the very same night. Um, the legislation for the auto regulations for the nation of Florida. Uh, not all of the uh, vendors have to have the same number, so uh, they will have to fill out some of the type of paperwork. But uh, mm -hmm. we also we did back out for the library because there is a library living system. Um, those were the ones who were having trouble finding vendors that um, could do the work that Metropolitan is doing. Those that have to be back with um, February 15th, we still have a lot to do shit, but um, we're, we're hopeful that they're going to the, the 15th. So um, I'll keep you uh, applying on that one. Uh, the C course is um, scheduled to be the server for the um, the subsequent server for the cloud between the most to the textbooks that have come in that was purchased with ARPA and the access records on the um, and we have the closing it. Um, the, the last thing that's down pending, or not the last thing, but for, for this update right now, is the LDRA. I, I contacted the LDRA this week to, uh, to let them know the timeline for the ARPA funds that we have to designate a certain amount. Right now, we have the last line item for the remaining ARPA funds for um, the Marina project, but then we're going to have to sort of start um, tailoring it down soon. They are in the middle of getting their um, uh, feasibility study completed. And um, we're hoping to, I, uh, Ms. Rosie and Mr. Justice will hopefully be able to come give us some more specifics in March about what the data might be to start to make that um, decision so we can get all of them allocated. And that's not it. It's just that we, if the players decide to move forward with that, you know, um, construction projects take longer to have to explore and do. And so, you know, we have two years for ARPA, but that's not very long when you're talking about. And, and it has to be complete. So, how, like, how long is it taking you to get library? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's federal money, so it takes a lot of um, uh, or take to get through to use it. So, we just want to, we don't want to wait too long. So, so they'll be here hopefully in March, let the utility study be done, and then they can zero in and wait to make some decisions, and uh, we'll have them approved by the weekend. Uh, the GLO uh, Dreamers grant, um, we are still uh, in the pre-documenting uh, our original uh, project 
uh, starter document to approve uh, the design and environmental sustainable take. Oh, I'm sorry, take the, or the engineers have started the surveying, and um, once the surveying is about 30% complete, then they'll give that to the environmental department of grant work, and they'll start reviewing that. They're trying to do the GLOs, the environmental reviews, alongside the surveying, so there's not such a long delay in between when the survey is done or when the environment review gets done. And um, so once that's completed, um, we can move forward with getting the bids for the contractors. So um, we're looking, we're probably still looking in the late summer before early fall before we can shovel to the dirt on, on this project, but it is um, being worked on. Um, and the, on the, the we start monthly meetings with the CLO on the status of the grant project. So. I'll have that. And um, I've already agreed on the Texas Parks and Wildlife agenda. Uh, the USDA grants that we're trying to get for the library, they have not opened yet. We were led to our, the understanding of that they would be opening in February. As of now, they haven't opened yet. But we are moving ahead with the public input. Um, I'm sure when you read through the, the library survey that it's brought out, we're already at 130 groups of um, at least time when I wrote this, it might be a little more. So, um, uh, so we're working with public input, and by the when I post this uh, survey, I'll be able to report back today in March what the results of the survey will be. Um, I'd like to thank the town of Bayview, LMCA, Cortez Bell School librarians, and um, I'm not sure if um, Cortez Bell actually uh, City Hall actually posted anywhere, but I did post it to them and ask them to circulate it. But I do know Bayview at City. I know that LMC did, and I know that the, some of the school librarians um, did serve for Cortez the Bell. So um, I just want to thank them for helping us get our public input. Um, our town marketing um, newsletter was going, we're about 61% open rate, so we're standing right April 1st. Um, we have the, the department report is um, the police with the police report is on uh, December 27th. We welcomed the new officer on board. Danny Holland started as our new district officer, so um, it's we welcome him um, around town. And um, so, we, the last thing that I wanted to remind everyone of is that we will be holding a fund meeting on Monday. So, um, it's a just note down that we will be doing on Monday. And does anybody have any other specific questions about the recommended report? I know it's really cool. Yes.